An overview of Ajax. So far, we saw what Ajax is and how it works. Now let's see how we can use Ajax. But before that, just keep in mind that Ajax is not a programming language, so you are not going to learn any new technologies here. We are just going to implement the existing technologies like JavaScript and XML. Now let's get into our topic. Use any server-side technologies like PHP or ASP to retrieve data from the server database, and which has been again transmitted to clients using XML HTTP requests object. So once after the data has arrived, we need to reload the web page with new data. But as we saw in our previous tutorial, here in Ajax we can send and receive the data behind the screen, and as well as that. We can update the web page without refreshing it. Let's see how to do this. JavaScript communicates directly with servers using its XML HTTP request object, and we have often heard this word XML HTTP request, right? Yes, it plays a key role in Ajax. This HTTP request object will make a request to, and get the response from. A web server without reloading a web page. This XML HTTP request object is supported by Internet Explorer 5.0 Plus, Safari 1.2, Mozilla Firefox 1.0, and Opera 8 Plus. But this object's creation is different in Internet Explorer. We will be discussing this briefly in our upcoming tutorials. So, now let's conclude this lesson by summarizing the process. Which we must carry out throughout this Ajax tutorial. First, we need to create an XML HTTP request object. We know why, don't we? So, what will be our next step? Yes, request data from the server using this object. Now, consider we sent the request successfully. What should we do next? Exactly, we should monitor the state of the request. And this is being done with the help of JavaScript. If the response is successful, then the requested data will be returned as response. Finally, we have to use that response in our web page. Are you clear? Well, let's see all these processes one by one in our upcoming tutorials. But before that, we will see what is the difference between traditional web development and AJAX development. Okay. So, we will now discuss it in our next tutorial. Traditional web development versus AJAX development. In previous tutorials, you would have got a good idea about AJAX, about how it works, what the process that goes behind it is, and something like that. Fine, but do you know how AJAX is different from our classic web development methods? Well, let's see. This is the diagrammatic representation of classic web applications, and this is Ajax's web application model. First, let's discuss about our classic web application model. See in this the user's action in the interface triggers an HTTP request to a web server. Now the server processes this request. Say, for example, it retrieves the data from the database if needed. It talks to various legacy systems, and finally returns an HTML page to the client. Actually, this model has been adapted from web's original use as a hypertext medium, but this may be good for web applications and not software applications. Also, it doesn't make good user experiences because once after sending requests to the server. The user has to wait until he or she gets the response, and he or she has to wait at every step in a task. But why should the user interaction come to halt every time when the application needs something from the server? Well, yes, this is the drawback of our classic method. Let's see how we overcome this using Ajax. Ajax came up mainly to eliminate the previously mentioned start-stop-start-stop nature of interaction on the web, and this has been done by introducing an intermediary, that is, an Ajax engine between the user and the server. The browser loads this Ajax engine at the start of the session, 
and this engine is responsible for both rendering the interface the user sees and communicating the server on behalf of the user. The AJAX engine allows the user's interaction with the application to happen asynchronously, that is, independent of communication with the server. So the user is never staring at a blank browser window and an hourglass icon. Well, this AJAX is a boom for the web application developers, and it really came up to enhance the user's experience. I hope you will agree with that. So now let's move on to our next tutorial. JavaScript and its general rules. I hope you might have heard that AJAX is based on JavaScript, so you should have enough knowledge in JavaScript to use AJAX. This chapter is completely dedicated for JavaScript, so at the end of this tutorial, you will have a clear knowledge about the JavaScript and how it connects with AJAX. Well, now it's time to get started. JavaScript is used to perform a number of useful tasks. Such as respond to user actions, validate data, and more. It can enhance the dynamics and interactive features of your site with small amounts of code. Let's see how. As stated earlier, JavaScript provides everything which we need to accomplish a programming task. In that syntax, variables and operators are the very basic concepts which we should learn first before getting into any programming concept. Fine. Let's start our discussion with syntax. Syntax is the rule which we should follow while writing the code. If we don't follow this, we would end up with syntax errors. So let's see a few guidelines which will help us follow good programming practices. JavaScript is case sensitive. Pay extra attention while using capital letters. Semicolons are optional. Even though semicolons are optional, it is advisable to use for better understanding. JavaScript comments. Syntax for JavaScript comment is double forward slash for a single line, and to do multi-line comments, just type forward slash followed by an asterisk, and it must end with the asterisk symbol followed by the forward dash. This is all about syntax. Now let's see something about variables. Variable is a temporary storage container for data. In JavaScript, variable names are declared using the var keyword, like this. Every JavaScript variable has a data type that indicates the kind of data the variable contains. Here we have five types of data types. They are number, string, boolean, undefined, and null. These data types store data directly in a variable. Well, now let's see what an operator is. Operators allow us to perform actions on a variable. Here in JavaScript, we have five different types of operators. They are assignment operator, arithmetic operator, comparison operator, logical operator, and increment or decrement operators. As I said earlier. All these types of operators allow us to work with operators. Say, for instance, this assignment operator helps us to assign values to the variables. Likewise, each type of operator allows us to perform different sorts of operations. Fine. Let's not get any more into it. Okay. Good. I think we've discussed enough about the variables, syntax, and operators. Let's discuss next about JavaScript statements. In our tutorial coming up, JavaScript statements. Our JavaScript is composed of statements. Variable declarations, assignments, and initializations are the few examples of JavaScript statements. Other than these, we do have a core set of programming statements. They are conditionals, which include if and else and switch. Then loops such as for and while comes under this category. Flow control statements. Break and continue comes under this category. Let's discuss them one by one. First, let's take conditional statements. As I said earlier, if and else and switch statements falls under this category. These statements are used to control the execution of the code in our program. Okay, now let's see what is if statement. 
This if statement evaluates the Boolean value of an expression and then executes the code based on the result of the evaluation. Switch statements are used in place of series of if statements. Well, now let's see why we use looping statements. Loops are the way to repeat a block of code based on conditions that we specify. As I said before, here we have two major kinds of loops. They are for and while loop. Where this for loop consists of three expressions, look at this. This first expression is the initialization, which is then followed by the condition, and finally comes our iterator. This loop continues ex execution as long as this condition returns true. So here this loop iterates for 11 times. Fine, now let's see what is while loop. A while loop can be considered as a reformulation of for loop. It includes a test condition and an iterator. This loop continues its execution as long as the test condition returns true. OK, this is all about the loops. And now we have two flow control statements yet to be discussed, OK? Well, break and continue are the two flow control statements. Where this break is a way to escape a loop and continue with the first statement after the loop. A continue statement allows us to skip the rest of the loop, but to continue with the next iteration of the loop. That's all we'll discuss about functions in our next tutorial.